Welcome to the Lately in PHP podcast uh, number 66. And as always, I have here with me Arthur Sossins from Latvia that stayed up this late to record a bunch of podcasts in a row. And this is the final one that uh, we have been struggling because we had some links to comment, but the site that we linked uh that hosted the archive of php internals was not live so we had to find another one hello arthurs how are you doing oh already had my midnight snack so we're ready to go <laughs> yeah uh, but uh today it will be a special episode because we comment about many interesting topics not only php 7 has been released but there are many new interesting things being discussed for the next PHP version, which uh, people are already discussing. But let's start the usual uh, order, which is to come on the, on the latest PHP release. Uh, this month we only had uh, PHP 5.6 releases. Let me share the screen here. Uh, if I can. Okay, so we had PHP 5.6.15 and 6.16. There are a bunch of fixes, uh, and the, the uh, well, I don't know if there is anything worth really noticing the, uh, on these bug fixes because it's always the usual bug fixes that were uh, um, submitted and fixed. Of some are security related, others won't. Um, anyway, uh, the great uh, event of of these days it was php 5 point uh, php 7 <laughs> sorry that fi was finally released after I you were throwing me by announcing some other php version yeah <laughs> well php 7 uh it's the the, the um, first major version after 11 years when php 5 dot zero was released and it has many features and uh, it was well awaited because not only of the features but also because of the speed improvement uh, some claim that it is uh, twice as fast as php 5.6 but de it depends on what if it is on pure processing tasks or not. Uh, anyway, it is a, a, a version that was well anticipated, like uh, about two years of development and uh, many contributions, many great new features that people were asking. And I even have written an article about this uh, in reality, the article was to publish the results about uh, whether the PHP developers will adopt PHP 7. Now that the PHP 7 release date arrived on December 3. Uh, so a few weeks ago, I launched a survey and uh, like there were like 526 users that have um, uh, filled that survey. In this article, I also tell a bit about the PHP 7 story, uh, mention why it is 7 and not 6, because 6 it was cancelled. Also mentioned uh, the developments of Facebook, the hop compiler, the HF, HVM, uh, virtual machine and um, the Facebook hack language that somehow I believe they influenced uh, PHP core developers to move on with PHP which was 
can uh, de being developed very slowly. And uh, there were some major new features uh, besides performance. Uh, initially, it was motivated by introducing a JIT engine, which never happened, but uh, it motivated one core developer from Zen, Dmitry Stogov, to investigate other paths to increase uh, the um, PHP performance. And uh, after, besides that, there were many features that were being uh, proposed, like uh, strict typing for scalar values, uh, anonymous classes, nested classes. The one feature that I comment in a separate article, which is the PGO optimization, which is basically a possibility to compile the PHP engine to, to, to be optimized to run a specific application faster, like for instance, WordPress. Uh, I don't think many people use this because they don't compile their own PHP uh, installation. They will just use some of some distribution. Um, anyway, there were some delays. PHP 7 was supposed to, to be released like in October, but there were like eight release candidates to iron on the most important bugs. And finally, in December 3, it was released with a big discussion because the developers wanted to delay it to include some open SSL library in the Windows distribution that was being released in also in December 3 and the other developers were very anxious and arguing uh, uh, well uh, that's all over it is released and now let's see uh, Arthur are you going to adopt PHP 7 no <laughs> you are using no jets <laughs> No, I was actually quite impressed with the results. Uh, do you want to comment, or I can comment some interesting things that I found in the results? Yeah, sure. Uh, the, the the survey that um, um, I put up was uh, just asking three questions: If you are going to use PHP seven in production, or uh, if you are use are going to use PHP seven on your development environment regardless if you're on production. And what is the latest PHP version using uh, PHP? Well, I even interpreted, the, the, give my opinion about the results, but uh, we also want to hear what you have to say about these results. Yeah, well, the first really interesting thing for me was that majority uh, PHP users use 5.6 version because I really think it would be lower due to what uh, hosting companies still provide, like 5.3 or, or 5.4. So that was really interesting thing that majority of PHP keeps up to with the latest version. Well, um, when they can, right? If they yeah, can, yeah. they will. I just thought that majority would use some uh, hostings and stuff like that, but probably majority uses some virtual servers where, where they have control over PHP version. Or, or better hostings that I use that provide higher versions too. Uh, and uh, about PHP uh, 7, the, 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 the most interesting change, I think that uh, for production majority answered that they would wait a couple of weeks or months before using it in production. But for development, uh, majority answered that they would use the official versions once it comes out. So they already use, start using it in development environment. So yeah. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting shift because uh, for me, I, 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 I'm still not using it in development environment. So I will probably wait a couple of more versions before starting even to play with it. Right. But you, you are not exactly playing on this PHP league, right? Uh, currently no, but well, Everything might change eventually. So. Yeah, sure, of course. And uh, well, it is interesting not just that, uh, that um, at least most people are at the minimum, they are using PC 5.3. And this is important because there was a, a dash DOS collision 
which we actually also comment again on this podcast, um, was fixed in 5.311, I think, and uh, you should not be using a lower version than that, or else somebody can easily halt your server. And um, but that's in production. Uh, uh, in production, there were still already people already using PHP 7. They are brave enough to <laughs> to even before because uh, it was this survey was like made uh, a few weeks ago. Most of the answers come on the f f first days, so it was interesting to notice that uh, there were like two percent of people already uh, using it in production. Uh, like, uh, no, sorry, it, uh, yeah. 4%. Yes, no, it's percent. 4% 4 say that they are rising since the few historical versions. But then only, only, only 2%, 1.9% say that they use it in, in production. So already, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, this is this was before the the yeah. the, the announcement. Well, um, it is interesting to know. Nothing, nothing, uh, nothing uh, special. Uh, nothing and uh, and so unexpected. It's somehow understandable that most people will wait for a while. Uh, that. Um, before starting using PHP 7, because the first versions will have the the first bugs detected soon and fixed. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, PHP 7.01 is scheduled to before Christmas. So, yeah, that's possible. Ah, because they know that uh, many bugs will pop up now. <laughs> Many more will pop up on Christmas. Yeah, well, there will always be interesting bugs. Um, but that's basically it. Uh, other than that, I comment already a few things about what I expect for the future of PHP 7, like a PCO, which is basically PDO for cryptography, so you can use different libraries to implement the same uh, cryptography functions. There is a tool called Fan. You'll probably get back to this later um, because it's, it's a static code analyzer that is being developed by Rasmus, but uh, somebody else is already continuing the development. The idea is to detect possible bugs just by analyzing your code without having to run it. So it's static. And they take advantage of the, the abstract Citrix tree feature that was introduced now in PHP 7. And there, is, there, there are all, always discussions about having a sync and a wait. This is not a trivial or a feature to implement, so we don't know when it will be available. Uh, uh, I, it seems that the plan is to have PHP 7.1 in one here, uh, from what I heard, uh, but I have to look at the schedule because I think there is a place with the schedule. So let's see if these features will be available. Well, with a sync and a wait, uh, that means that PHP will have great support for uh, asynchronous programming. And so it would be easy to develop a standalone web server written in pure PHP or uh, like uh, uh, we have in Node.js. And, um, and then the, the performance of PHP will depend just on, on that. I don't know if this is something that the community desires, but certainly it will be interesting to have I don't know what are your experiences with um, with uh, Node.js. Uh, would it be better Node.js uh, runs, for instance, on top of uh, Nginx, or is it better to run with its own web server? Well, 
for example, in our case, the way we use it, we run multiple Node.js processes, and to access them, you would need to access them with specific ports. So to cover that, to hide that, we still use NGX to route the correct uh, request to correct processes. So uh, in that way. So you, you use you use like uh, NGX as load balancing or proxy or? Uh, yeah. It's possible to use it as well, but it's also, but uh, that's not, not the main purpose. So basically, uh, we wrote different paths to different Node.js processes that, that handle them. So we have. Oh, I see. One. Yeah. So why did you use Nginx in the front and not another instance of Node? Node. Uh, Node yet? I don't know. <laughs> my decision. <laughs> oh, you came you came after the boss decided. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it is interesting to know why if people can use their own server, why they use it or not. Because PHP also comes its built in uh, with a built in server, it's not recommended for production environments. It's not exactly something highly optimized. Um Anyway, uh, this is for PHP 7. There were parties around the world. Everybody was celebrating. <laughs> but there are some other interesting news that happened lately that are related with PHP. One of those news was exactly about. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, many people got this. Uh, news that uh, WordPress.com is now based in JavaScript, and so WordPress is dumping PHP. <laughs> Except that it's not exactly the case. There is what, what happened. It is there was there is this new interface called um, Calypso, which basically is an alternative to H WP admin, which is based on react.js and node.js server on the server right yeah and they're basically using node.js as a start process to simply serve html files it's a web server basically if, if php would come with its own web server that is ready for production then maybe they would use php on that part uh, or not because they are <laughs> javascript maniacs <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what was the motivation. We have been listening to threats that uh, WordPress would switch to Python and now JavaScript and uh, whatever. And uh, the reality is not that. It was just part of the interface that was the, the administration interface that was um, replaced with. Uh, yeah the the calypso interface on wordpress.com so if you have your own wordpress installation it has nothing to do with that well maybe it does actually because calypso is like a client for a wordpress rest api so i think you can even install calypso on your computer and access uh, and manage your wordpress uh, account by that i don't know if it works with custom installations or not but uh, yeah, I think it has to have the 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 the, the, the server side too the server side uh, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure because I don't use WordPress I just tried it in wordpress.com just to see if it was any different and uh, basically it is something that uh, you can uh, use but you don't know what is on the server side. And um, if it uses WordPress.com uh, REST API, we don't know if it is PHP or something else. Probably it's PHP because it's WordPress. Yeah. Um, it could be. We don't know. Uh, it was not clear for me. Uh, there was an article also by Matt Malonweg talking about uh, Calypso, uh, what he thinks about uh, it. He says that whether the community is going to embrace it or not is up to the community. They are using it for the WordPress and for 
from what I understood, I they are using um, in WordPress.com probably to save resources, to save servers, because uh, if it is all based on uh, JavaScript, mo a great part on client side, it probably save a lot of um, servers that will get yeah. less requests. Not that, that that couldn't be done in PHP, I think. And there is also yeah, yeah why well, not? Should not be a problem. Probably no JS parallelization also has something yeah. to do with it. And uh, there is this article, six, six things you should know about WordPress moving to JavaScript. The first thing is WordPress is not only the WP admin, that is the part that actually serves the, the, the pages and integrates with whatever plugins and themes that you are using. WP admin is tightly linked to WordPress. So <clears throat> it is a, a part of WordPress. It's not something that calls an API, a REST API like Calypso. Calypso is a, a new ad administration tool, so it is an alternative for WP admin. Calypso is also for reading. Reading uh, now you can uh, choose blogs to read from other sites and read those blogs in your own mm, blog interface. Calypso. PHP-based WordPress isn't going anywhere, neither WP admin. So basically, if you were concerned if they are ditching PHP for WordPress, and you have invested all these years developing plugins or themes or integrating with your site needs, all done in PHP, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> and nothing is going to happen. So basically, the, uh, that, that's it. If you are concerned about the WordPress dumping PHP, don't be, have a Merry Christmas, nothing like that is going to happen. Uh, so moving on to the next topic. Now we are going to start talking about some interesting features that are being proposed for the next PHP version. I would like to start with yet another request to have a sort of um, feature similar to C++ friend class, uh, which allows uh, you to tell that um, if uh, a certain class is a friend of another, it can access its protected, <coughs> protected members. And this is the equivalent to to uh, what uh, in Java I think they call it uh, package uh, permissions, right? Probably. Probably. Package <laughs> also, yeah. <coughs> I don't. Sorry, I don't use so uh, Java. If I'm if I'm a Node.js developer, you automatically assume I know everything about Java. Not me, but some people will. <laughs> yeah. No, I uh, I was wondering because I'm not a Java developer. If you knew anything about uh, these things, but I think that's uh, package uh, um, visibility that what they call in in Java. It's the same as C plus plus friend classes, and there was another guy that asked for some similar like, uh, similar like uh, called it internal methods. Like you can uh, call uh, methods of uh, other classes that they are considered internal to uh, or the same namespace. So three similar feature requests in one month. That's interesting. Yeah, actually some are just comebacks of the same features that were requested some time ago. And there was an, there's an article here on this site, P 
PHP friend classes. It talks about what the, those classes are. Code in in, in uh, C++. So this is one thing that has been requested. Um, we don't know if this time, because uh, there were proposals before, but we don't know if this time they, they will actually uh, implement this. We know if when people are persistent, sooner or later they get there, like what happened with strict typing for scalar values. That there were many proposals to address the, 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 the objections. So finally they implemented it. So moving on to another topic. It is about somebody that requesting and to uh, to write the, the compiled PHP opcode to files. Uh, it actually mentioned B compiler extension, APC bin functions, and since PHP five dot five, uh, it was introduced uh, the Zen opcode cache. Uh, uh, after discussing a bit, they said, oh, this is sort of saving, uh, accessing the cache files uh, of, of the compiler that um, that already exists, that, that, that are already generated. You can, you can tell to it to generate the cache files and save them to, to files. So that is the result of the compilation of PHP codes already saved to files. So um, those Which people that... Can you, can you run it then again after you save it to file? Can you run it from file? Well, if it is a cache file, the next time that you run the, 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 the same script, it will get it from there. And I think the the usual way to see if the cache is up to date is to compare timestamps. So as long as the timestamp of the original source is older mm, I see. than the, the cache file, you can actually force. I don't know if, for instance, you, if you add the, the PHP script that was compiled and it is in the cache directory, if you replace the original source file by another file that has nothing on it, but has a older timestamp, it will probably still load the cache. So that could be a form of distributing PHP binaries. Yeah, that would be. It, right. it's, a bit, it's a bit odd, but it is something that many people want. Uh, and uh, there was a great discussion in the, the thread because uh, if you want to, people um, complain, if you want to protect your source code, rest assured that it, it, it can always be defeated because there are uh, uh, disassemblers and they can regenerate the original source code. And uh, well, while that is true, it uh, is also, that doesn't mean that is not uh, useful. For instance, if you have a nosy boss that uh, uh, he doesn't know much of programming, but and he keeps picking and changing your code because he thinks so. If you give him some binaries, he'll do nothing because he, he doesn't know enough. Uh, on the other hand, he can know enough and do the complicated thing, which should be to disassemble that code and alter it and so on. Great example from a guy who works at home and is, and is self-employed. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's not my case because I don't have that problem, but I have read many people uh, claiming for that. Oh, we want to have a, a a version uh, that uh, we, it can distribute binaries. 
Uh, and there are commercial compilers. There are many from Zen, Source Guardian, IamCube. I think Newsfree also has one. And uh, uh, if you use the, their extensions, uh, it's probably harder, although it's not impossible to, to decode because uh, you don't have the source to actually determine how the code was encoded and, uh, uh, but uh, if you know enough you can always probably intercept it so at least in theory you will be more protected with a, a commercial encoder than with a solution like this but uh, nevertheless there's there is always people that are always trying to get solutions uh, that they don't, don't, they, they don't pay, even though they are inferior solutions. I even remember that um, not very long ago, some people actually found it useful to encrypt the source code and generate uh, uh, a PHP script that actually decrypted the, 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 the the data and executed it. So as long as it is a little more difficult for somebody to pick on some code, it is uh, useful. And even though the, the performance, because when we encrypt the code, you have to decrypt it. And uh, uh, if you don't cache the results, it will be slower. Even in that case, people find it useful, so it is interesting. So this solution to write uh, compiled code, co op codes, to using the op cache extension can, can also be useful. There is only one detail that is worth mentioning, is that this is not, these op code files, they are not portable. I mean, if you have, for instance, a uh, 64-bit system, you compile it uh, to these cache files, they, they will not probably not run on 32-bit systems or with another CPU. And so you, you need to be careful to not assume this is a general solution for, for distributing uh, binaries, compiled binaries for PHP. I don't know if you ever had the the concern to 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 protect your PHP binary, Arthur. No, not really. I I encountered some things that uh, when buying software that they usually encoded, and then we had lots of problems with the, <laughs> that encoding and. Uh, yeah, but there's really no other way to do it. But I myself, I, I usually write open source scripts, so I don't bother. Yeah, but some, some, even some time ago, there was an, an author that sent to JS classes uh, a library that would actually uh, generate self uh, self executing code that uh, uh, would decrypt. Uh, decode some some code and execute it. Uh, the problem is that the next packages that the guy sent would be uh, encoded that same way, and it was uh, it, 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 gave, it gave some work to actually understand, read, and understand the code. And I said, oh, well, if I don't understand the, the code. I cannot write a description for that code, so I cannot approve it. And the guy was mad and removed the package and went away. Well, what can we do? We need. We, I need to approve the package. I cannot simply uh, make a, a very hard effort to uh, read the code and uh, determine what it does. Uh, because people want to have a clear description of the package. So uh, that's how, how it handled. Uh, uh, it's, it's not uh, useful. So if it was meant to protect the, the code, well, there are other sites for, 
for for them to distribute it and, and but the code is being given away no, it's not even being uh, sold it's just given away just protected the, the guys finally wanting to protect the algorithm uh, anyway moving on another topic about uh, a proposal that is being uh, considered for the next PHP versions is the immutable modifier in which you have uh, immutable data as I understood that if you have immutable you cannot change the the class or the property uh, the, the object at least after the constructor that's not the proposal uh, here say yeah and interesting that attempts to modify the property would result in a fatal error yeah probably a catchable Software. exception now this i don't recall any use case but i i can imagine this could be uh, useful in some cases probably to detect bugs uh probably when you have a complicated situation on which you don't want uh, you are changing some variable but you are not sure where in your code that is happening mm -hmm. you can make yeah. the variable immutable and then see where exactly it is changing the value so you're creating a class and if you don't want somebody to change uh, some value in your class you make it private but now there are a lot of requests to make friend classes that could access private methods so you need to make them immutable yeah obviously they are not the same people yeah some want friends the other want uh, enemies so uh, this would be for for different purposes but i think it is interesting uh, there can be some use cases for this uh, okay moving on yet another feature that is being requested for many years and it never made php is having some native annotation syntax this uh, for those that are not familiar annotations are uh, I'll say meta information that is in the uh, the classes in the that code. Provided as a comment before the method, before the object, and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, well, actually, some people in this case they want it to be a native, uh, uh, have a native syntax because when people use comments, is because they don't want to change the language to support uh, annotations. So how would so, this be done through PHP? Sorry? So how would this be done through PHP itself? Yes, they want to have some native comments that are supported by the PHP engine to define annotations. Like this method is deprecated. We have deprecated keyboard before it or something like that. Well, maybe for instance, I, I suppose uh, annotations are are something that can be arbitrary, not, not something exactly. anticipated by the by the language. That's why I'm thinking, how could it be natively implemented? Because you would need some kind of API to make it happen, but it's arbitrary. So, oh, it's interesting yeah. to see the solution. Well, they want to have some native uh, syntax that I don't think they have discussed a specific syntax, but there were proposals in the past by, for instance, Guillermo Blanco submitted a proposal in the past. We discussed it, it, it actually in the early episodes of the Lately in PHP podcast. And, uh, and there, then again, there is a big discussion about this, uh, about having uh, or not uh, an, an annotation syntax. Uh, I, I find it particularly interesting the argument of Guillermo Blanco because somebody said that uh, 
there must be a strong demand for this feature in the new community uh, to implement it. But then you remember that, for instance, traits, there was not a strong demand for traits. Mm -hmm. Actually, most people did not, not even have a clue what were traits before they were implemented. And still many people don't know about it. So there is, that was not really a good argument. Um, the problem, I think, is that some people take this discussion so with so much passion that they take it personally when somebody disagrees and they start being cynic to each other to the point that uh, if one is in favor, it, the other will be against. And when the, the vote comes, the person will just go there, vote against, just because he took it personal. And this is no. silly, but it happens a lot in the in the PHP core discussions. In my opinion, uh, the point of Nate of annotations, having annotations, if uh, it is if you have a strong uh, uh, IDE to write the code and it would uh, understand the annotation and uh, uh, and scrapes the information from there and present you like return parameters, accept parameters, deprecated or or alternatives and stuff like that. Uh, so I, th I think that's not so much would be needed or, or had in PHP, but rather uh, text editors can already take what at least what Java has and, and, and parse it and you can write it in PHP code. So I, I don't see that as a problem. Then, yeah, the thing with native annotations, that, that's what confuses me, but probably they then they want to have ability to retrieve them, read them, like a reflection API or stuff like that. I, I don't really don't know. Yeah, but that depends because the IDEs, they make a specific interpretation of uh, annotations or doc blocks you know, for instance to guess types before there was type hinting and uh, and that's it but there are other uses for instance ORM tools sometimes they generate code based on uh, uh, definitions annotated in, in the in the classes uh, and that is something that probably uh, IDEs did not anticipate and what they are uh, asking is to have uh, an annotation uh, uh, syntax that is native to the language so they don't have to rely on, on comments. Uh, so it, it would be like one they, they don't have to rely on having their own parser to the comments. So it would be like uh, on the user level, on text editor level that they see, or it would be on the class level, like one class knows more about the other class because it would also parse its annotations. Yeah. They, they they want to have the possibility to to have that information in the class and have the php, PHP uh, engine to uh, help extracting that that information yeah okay so they don't have to have their own parsers for for whatever annotation format is being decided because there are now many annotation formats that are built in comments and they they are not necessarily compatible. This is my interpretation. Personally, it doesn't bother me much because, uh, well, many years ago I, I developed a sort of a meta language that would compile code. Uh, the source code is in XML format. Well, it, those are the days of XML, so you have to excuse me. <laughs> Nowadays, I wouldn't use a XML, but that's how it went. And uh, it, uh, you could, for instance, define classes with this XML structure. So what I did is, for instance, you have PHP 
classes, some classes that I wrote, I use that meta, uh, meta language that would find classes. It, it would have all everything, types. Uh, uh, it would have um, everything that PHP didn't have by then. And I use that and put in comments. And then I use the tool to extract that those comments to generate documentation. And the documentation was extracted from the class automatically. And uh, okay, I had the trouble to define that uh, meta language, but it was not just for that purpose. I, I used for other purposes. I have a ORM tool called Meta Storage that generates classes uh, to do ORM operations. So I don't have to write that code. It uh, saves me a lot of time. Generates classes, generates the database schema, also in some other XML format. And uh, I, it generates classes to install the database schema and, and so on. It saves me a lot of time, but those are tools that I developed many, many years ago. And uh, if I were to wait for the PHP core developers to finally accept to implement uh, annotations, oh, I would have already died because you cannot wait forever. Those discussions sometimes, uh, you just go there sometimes, it seems they do it on purpose. I'm, I'm going to boycott you. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a shame that people sometimes take things too personally. Having different opinions is just something that is very common. There should be no reason for people to take it so personally. Uh, but that's the way things are. You cannot also expect to change other people. You have to be, if you want something, you have to be the diplomatic. You have to, to ask instead of demand. You have to be polite. And sometimes you explain things, people misunderstand you. You have to blame yourself because you didn't explain in a way that people understood it correctly. And you waste a lot of time and that. You have to be basically a politician, which I don't have much vocation, but that's how things uh, move on. Many things, the discussion, for instance, for strict typing in PHP was wow, like tens and tens of messages in threads, people arguing multiple versions of the, the proposals, each one f fixing s objections that uh, was, were encountered previously. And then there was a big campaign to call everybody to vote on the, the final proposal. And only then the things were approved. It was quite a miracle. And I don't know if... Uh, this proposal of uh, annotations will go the same way. It will, I think it will depend a lot on uh, the patience and the diplomacy of the people that are involved in this discussion. Well, that's the way I see it. I don't know if you have anything to add to this point of view. I, I just uh, see your point about it and yeah, I would agree that there is no point waiting. <laughs> And uh, like you, I would use some kind of similar solution to achieve it, but it would be great if it could be natively supported, of course. Yeah, and uh, and the, th the thing is that when you only rely on your code, it works with the current version, not uh, some future version that probably you are, you are not yet using. Hmm. Okay, but moving on. Oh, one other topic that was interesting that appeared in the the, the, I'm trying to increase the form, it's not working. Okay, there it is. Well, uh, somebody implemented a proof of concept that would achieve 3.5 times more performance bo boost for PHP 7 using four cores. Well, I'm, I'm not sure if I understood it. So if you use four cores, you only get 3.5 more performance. Why, why not four times, right? Yeah, exactly. Or more. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some magic. I think it depends on what are you, what are you about. 
doing that actually but uh, yeah probably there's some overhead and stuff like that before be between yeah uh, because it's not always the same and also it probably depends on the code in this case it was to manipulate arrays it was a patch that was applied to one of PHP RC versions and uh, it's for multiprocessing yeah. so you have, a, you have a flag and then it will uh, probably use multiple cores to process this is uh, this is uh, something along the lines of the those uh, GPUs that have many many ma many cores and then they split the tasks of uh, processing large arrays of data between the cores and then the result is indeed much faster but uh, whenever you use all the cores for that purpose the cores cannot be used for something else and uh, for instance if you are in the server you need to understand that uh, you do not own the cpu it's the cores are not only for you there are other tasks that need the cpu as well so yeah. you, you may sum v values in an array faster but then if you halt the system <laughs> but it's not the point the main point is that it is possible to uh modify yeah. PHP 7 to make it uh, run parallel and it provides a speed of boost so you could handle 3.5 more requests uh, uh, maybe not oh, yeah, it's, it depends it depends on what the requests do I don't think uh, that this array some uh, in array that we're using the benchmark will yeah, now are, will say that, are what makes most of PHP code. And now you will say that the database would be the bottleneck either way. <laughs> yeah, because PHP will spend most of the time waiting for something. Still but another the, point. Yeah. Well, actually, we mentioned in the past that somebody already had an idea to use the GPU to accelerate PHP. If you have a, a server with a graphic card like NVIDIA or something, you could use the GPU of the NVIDIA to, to accelerate some operation. I don't know. Because the GPU is not necessary for graphics, it's just for, modif for processing yeah. large amounts of data. Yeah. And there is, there is some extension, I think it's Coda, that you can um, uh, create some C++ code and compile it into native uh, code for the GPU and uh, make it uh, execute faster. That is, I think, what the, they do in the browsers, but for processing images and things like that. To, I think it is to implement those um, uh, 3D uh, CSS uh, uh, um, properties, animations, and things like that. I don't know. Uh, I think we mentioned that in a, in a past episode of the podcast. Anyway, people were discussing this, and basically they said, oh, you don't own the CPU. You need to understand that uh, if you have this code, uh, probably uh, it will not guarantee that you have all the cores for you to benefit from this and probably in real applications you probably will not have any benefit so but it's always an interesting idea i would disagree okay well but you can express your point of view yeah, what is i think it would actually benefit and if you have a dedicated server that is meant specifically to run your PHP application, then why wouldn't you have access to all the cores? It would be minimized on all other servers just to make your application performance better. 
Yeah, well, I don't know. It we have to see in practice if the gains are what the guy claims to be. That's those gains are when your server is not doing anything else. Uh, three point times faster. Uh, maybe you can also achieve those gains uh, with uh, multi-threading, like having parallel threads to do separate things. And uh, each thread would be assigned to a core, but I don't know if, uh, if that is something that programmers want to have so much control. In this case, it would be automatic. It would be applied to some 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 operation that they, they are working on. Uh, I think in case it was a race. Anyway, moving to one final topic that is interesting. It is about the Ash DOS protection. Uh, uh, maybe you remember the, the uh, uh, in PHP 5.3.9 that was a partial fix for this vulnerability. For instance, if a request gets a large amount of uh, values, uh, it can uh, store those values in an array that is not mm, very efficient and it will start taking more and more time to uh, add values to the array until it finally brings the server to a halt because it will be so slow. So the, the partial fix that happened then was to limit the number of values that you can put in an array. But that was just a partial fix. Uh, and in, in the case, it was array of uh, get and post requests because that's something that comes from the outside, something that uh, an attacker could abuse. Yeah, but but you could uh, accidentally generate the large array yourself. Uh, uh, that would be hard because the values of the array, they have to be carefully cra uh, crafted to have the same hash values. Yeah, so then uh, hash cohesion, right? Right, and uh, it would be hard to achieve that accidentally. Um, so, uh, but then the, they created a, a, an option called max input vars that limits like uh, the request values to 1,000 or something like that, which is already a lot. And, uh, uh, but there are, are other cases like, uh, for instance, when somebody uh, passes some JSON string, the JSON string is decoded by your own code. I mean, you call JSON decode and there was no real protection for that because you don't know if uh, if that that uh, that value coming from the outside or not. Uh, so there was a discussion about this, and basically the proposal, I th if I'm not mistaken, is that uh, uh, somehow uh, when you insert or we insert values in an array, the, the PHP internally counts the number of collisions. And if it exceeds the number of collisions, uh, uh, I mean a limit, a given limit, it will uh, throw an exception or or some fat fatal error or something. But at least it will not bring down your server. Yeah. That that that, I think that is the the proposal. And uh, but this is something that is still being discussed because it is recent. But it is good that people are keeping thinking on some edge cases that are not being addressed uh, and, it, and um, could cause security problems. Uh, talking about this, I didn't mention it initially, but uh, Stefan Hesser is, is going to issue or already issue a, a new release of the um, Suhos in um, extension, which provides protection for many of these things, probably at the expense of some performance, but at least 
the security is improved. Uh, uh, so he is releasing a new version for PHP 7. It's an extension that you can enable. So that is interesting. Well, uh, with this, uh, we would generally go to a section on which uh, uh, we talk about the latest articles and, uh, and book reviews that were uh, published recently. But nowadays, we're uh, recording that as a separate uh, podcast. So you should go there if you're interested. You should go there and, uh, um, and uh, watch that podcast that we already recorded and will be published separately uh, soon. Uh, anyway, just to mention briefly, we talk about uh, many interesting art tutorial articles related with the dependency injection, improving the, uh, the security of passwords using paranoid computing, searching uh, docx doc um, PDF documents, um, sending messages to uh, SMS messages to aut automated gateways. Uh, uh, controlled by PHP, uh, automatic PHP regular expression building, which is a very interesting article. Uh, also sending, interacting with your users with SMS, WhatsApp, Facebook, and Telegram. Uh, mi migrating your PHP code that used to load MySQL extension to MySQL I. And uh, one series of articles that starts talking about Docker. Uh, uh, then there's also another article about um, creating your own uh, framework of utility classes. And finally, one series of articles about uh, speeding back uh, processing tasks using queues. OK, now we are going to talk about the Innovation Award. Um, nominees and winners uh, starting precisely from the JS classes uh, nominees for September they were uh, about classes published on uh, September they were voted on October so in November the results come out so now I can start talking about them Arthur's which ones would you like to start commenting So, uh, PHP classes, right? No, for JS classes. Oh, JS classes, okay. Let me share this. Toolbar is always, always heights. Uh, okay, so I would want to comment on a class with an interesting name, Blappy. And um, it was developed by Emmanuel Podwin from France, and uh, what it does, it allows you to preload uh, Ajax uh, contents based on URLs uh, defined in this way uh, in the same page. So basically, this class parses all uh, links in the page and checks for the data attributes, data boepi, data boepi ref attributes, and preloads them. And uh, the reason is to make the switching faster. So, for example, this here is the menu, and uh, as we see, all the contents are already preloaded and they're switching quite quite fast. So, no additional requests to serve apart from the first one that was all information. So, I think that would be a great way to use in single web page applications and stuff like that. Yeah. So, Goes to Emmanuel, and he got one downloadable ebook of choice by O'Reilly for this package. Okay, on my behalf, I also would like to comment on another package. Unfortunately, we didn't have many packages being published on JS classes because it's a much smaller site. It's not like PHP classes that there are tons of innovative classes. So the other class that I want to comment is string multi-replace. Uh, in this case, it was developed by Martin Barker from the United Kingdom. 
and uh, basically this is to overcome a limitation of the replace functions uh, uh, you uh, usually can only replace one string at a time so if you want to replace multiple strings you would have to call replace multiple times so uh, this 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 uh, uh, I'll, well, I'll, I call it because it's maybe you could call it a, a subclass or a replacement class that will, the replace is the prototype of the replace function that uh, will make the function actually handle uh, multiple replacements in case it detects it is an array so it was uh, uh, an interesting solution because it keeps compatibility with the uh, the the default behavior of the replace function you know, at the same time it can um, uh, support multiple replacement functions so uh, kudos to martin barker and uh, for this he picked a book of choice from pact and now let's see how is the innovation award rankings for uh, the the javascript um, basically the for authors uh, it hasn't changed much because unfortunately there haven't been many packages being published uh, lately but um, the, the ranking so far is uh, and the stuff is uh, first with six packages in 23 points suresh kumar with uh, um, is in second with four packages and 13 points. Uh, Jackson Knowlton with three packages and 10 points. And then uh, uh, Stephen Shepman with two packages and eight points, tied with Arthur Sosins from Latvia, who would know with three packages and eight points. Diego Lamonic also with two packages and eight points. Then follows in seventh, uh, Dusan Boskik and Gianluca Ferrari with uh, seven points, one with two packages and another with one package in front. Joseph Brunner with two packages in six points so is tied with Everton La Rosa in ninth place, also with six points, but just one package. By countries, as we can see, is more or less the same ranking. Uh, just mapping authors to countries. So Hungary is in first with six packages and 23 points, then uh, followed by India with six packages and 20 points. Then uh, United States with four packages and 11 points. Then uh, France with three packages and 10 points. Italy, two packages and eight points. Australia is uh, in fifth tied with Italy with also eight points and then Latvia as well with just um, as three packages then in eighth position is Serbia and the Netherlands with seven points uh, one with two packages and the other with one package finally Austria with two packages and six points well I hope that uh, well there is only one month to go to end the year and uh, if uh, authors can move quickly, they can still change the rankings for, for authors and for countries. But uh, let's see how it goes. So this is for JavaScript. Now for PHP, the Innovation Award has been much more competitive and, uh, in September. We had like 14 nominees. It's a lot of people competing. And uh, this is great no, because. Really great new ideas. Yes, because um, uh, the, uh, there, are, there are much more packages in, in, in PHP classes, so it's harder to come. Uh, with good ideas, but the ideas that come that are innovative uh, They they tend to be somewhat surprising um, Let me share the screen here just to see how the, the, the 14 packages and uh, 
Well, Arthur, which channels would you like to comment? Um, the first one I would like to comment is uh, PHP code prepro preprocessor. So basically, as we all know, is in C, C++, we have macros preprocessor codes that are replaced and executed and compile time to replace variables, uh, remove parts of codes and stuff like that. And Alexander Selefonov from Russia created just similar package only for PHP. Basically, this uh, package takes a text file, a PHP code, and parses it, and allows you to do the same uh, the things that macros allow you to do, basically. Uh, maybe I don't see a feature uh, to use usage or uh, specific usage for this right now, but I really like the idea. It was really interesting. So uh, thank you to Alexander. And he got PHP Storm ID, personal permanent license for this package. The second one I want to mention is PHP configuration trade. Uh, lately, there have been a lot of trade packages that uh, like allows it easily to extend your class with some additional configuration. Uh, and uh, this one is also very clever. So it was created by Asher Wolfstein from United States. And basically, this class, this trait, allows to extend your class to uh, read and save configurations in different formats like ini, XML, PHP, RA, JSON, and YAML. So uh, by adding this trait to your class, you uh, gain access to probably save and load function that does, does that. Again, that's a really interesting and innovative use of the trait. Uh, yeah. So that's why I really like this one also. And uh, Asher got one downloadable ebook of choice by O'Reilly for this package. Well, on my part, I also want to comment that the remaining classes starting precisely by PHP Fuzzy Logic which is yet another non-trivial class that was developed in this case by Gaston da Silva from um, Argentina. <clears throat> and um, uh, basically it allows to implement some fuzzy, fuzzy logic uh, in your uh, applications as, uh, that uh, depend on rules that are not so um, how would I say, what would be the, the, the opposite of uh, fuzzy? Uh, could it be objective? Uh, yeah, well, understandable. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, this is yet another advanced package and because it requires to understand a lot of the, the fuzzy logic and um, uh, uh, the kudos to Gaston for is other is uh, submission and uh, okay the, the, another package that I wanted to comment is about uh, a package that we comment also in the article section which is the, the uh, PHP regex function by Christian Wieck from France uh, this is very advanced package because it, uh, among many other things, it lets you uh, give it uh, a text uh, with uh, some patterns and it figures a regular ex expression that matches, matches those expressions in the text. So that's one of the features and uh, it's quite advanced. Uh, it provides a lot of other less important features but this one is quite advanced and for this it, it was nominated for for the innovation award so let's see how is the innovation award rankings uh, for 2015 and we only have one last month to end the year so um, there is still time to send innovative packages and raise in this ranking. Uh, individually, we have uh, Dave Smith that is far ahead 
with 11 packages and 106 points. It's from the United States and also from the United States in second place, Matthew Knowlton with four packages and 53 points, followed by Samuel Adshina with five packages and 52 points. Then Dmitry Mamontov from Russia with four packages and 42 points. Tilly will ask you with four packages and 28 points. Is in fifth place, it's from Germany. Uh, Jose Luis Lazo with the two packages in 27 points from Spain. Gali Ahmed uh, uh, is in seventh place with three packages and 26 points. He's tied with Alexander Selefonov with also 26 points, but two packages. Uh, he's from Russia. Also from Russia, Wap Morgan in fifth, uh, in ninth place, is as Five packages and 24 points. Uh, and finally, Alicia Feliciano from Italy with two packages and 22 points. This is by author. Now, by country, uh, United States is very far ahead uh, with, uh, in first place, with 20 packages in 129, 25 points. It's so many points that I even. I'm even having a hard time <laughs> yeah. pronouncing. I think it and, should be a record or something. Yeah, I think uh, all these years it has been a record and the year is, is still not end. There is one month for authors to su submit their packages and uh, these numbers can even go higher. Anyway, in second place there is Russia with 14 packages and 112 points, which is also a great score. Uh, not as great as the United States, but it is a great score. There have been great uh, Russian... Uh, um, it's larger than previous years, awesome. first places. Yeah, uh, this year, is, uh, fortunately, people got uh, very excited with the Innovation Award and submitted Many packages. I just nominated like 16 packages for November. 16 packages uh, for November, which is uh, the record. Actually, there was another month with 16 packages, but it's a lot. And then then it makes us spend even more time commenting on the packages. <laughs> anyway, Niger is in third place. Is also a great uh, score with eight packages in 72 points, followed by India with eight packages in seven, 67 points, and then Spain with six packages and 60 points, followed by France in sixth place with seven packages and 55 points, Germany with eight packages and 51 points, and then Egypt with four packages and 36 points uh, in eighth place. In ninth place, Tunisia with four packages and 32 points, and Italy with two packages and 22 points. Well, the year did not end, but so far, congratulations to all uh, authors for their great submissions. We still have November to vote, which is happening right now, and December for packages to be nominated. So. This year has been a blast in terms of innovative submissions. And from what I have seen from the queue, there are packages to be approved, which I'm still lagging. There will be even more innovative packages. In the, this is great, probably the best year in terms of innovative packages. Congratulations to all uh, uh, authors that have participated. While I am at it, I just would like to invite all PHP developers to also submit some nice packages to JS classes, which is uh, uh, needing some care and attention for the lack of uh, so many participations. You also get prizes, not as many as you have here in PHP, but um, uh, you can you also get uh, the same level. Uh, similar level of recognition. What I wanted to ask was, uh, do you think that uh, new PHP features or like traits also impacted the amount of innovative packages? Oh, definitely, because there, there are quite a few traits. Not all traits, not all packages that uh, implement traits, 
were considered innovative, but um, some actually make it, or actually we have comment on a few, and um, uh, they tried it's something that uh, brought a new approach to solving problems of reusing code that needs to be reused and uh, components of, for totally different purposes, but have some some common features like, uh, for instance, the configuration traits that we talked. So I'm sure that uh, it definitely contributed, but there are many more packages that were not about traits and uh, they were really innovative. So congratulations to, uh, to all. So with this, we just finished to comment about uh, uh, the Innovation Award and uh, let's have a few more packages to the JS classes side <laughs> as well. Yeah. So, with this, we practically ended this podcast. I would like to thank uh, the patient of Arthur's that is practically already uh, sleeping <laughs> because it's very late in his time zone. Uh, thank you again for coming. So, on my behalf, that is all for now. Bye.